The next day, the shack was far more hurry than usual. Stan was forced to shut doors for the day, and he cursed the loss of money. But he took advantage of the free time to get the house decently presentable for the incoming gremlins. He had two days before the twins would leave the hospital to come live in the shack. Stan had never housed children, but he used Seuss for proper opinions on bed comfort and food choices. A cot and a full-sized bed stolen from a garage sale were moved to the attic. One of the kids apparently had a mild allergy to dust, and Stan set up doing more cleaning than he'd done in a lifetime. He even nearly forgotten how to hold a mop. The shack was clean, but it felt wrong, as if the trepidation of housing new residents hung in the atmosphere itself. And Stan hated it. For a semblance of balance, he scattered cola cans around the place to help with his intended dishevelment before retreating towards the gift shop. No questions, Stan barked, scaring Wendy enough to where her craft went tumbling all over the counter. Any of you got clothes suited for children? For kids? Wendy swept the toothpicks off onto the floor, looking mildly annoyed at being interrupted. Why? You making another lame attraction? Cut the sass! I became a foster home buried under the bin! Stan stuck to abrupt answers, shifting a little figure on the counter to busy his hands. I've got kids coming in, and I gotta close them and feed them or whatever you do with kids. Unfortunately, his words seemed to have created enough of an impact because he saw Wendy's eyes light up in a way he'd never seen them. Really? She sat up fully interested as Seuss peered down from his work. Third, that's awesome. Never took you for a fostering guy. Never signed up for it. Stan quickly replied, hating the stares he was receiving. You got anything or am I wasting my time here? I might, Wendy said looking thoughtful, but it's probably just a pile of flannel. Try the lost and found, Mr. Pines. Seuss suggested, pointing to the lone box in the corner of the room. A lot of kids leave their sweaters, and it all goes in there. And there's that one kid who always leaves his shoes here. He lives life on the edge. Stan approached the box and dug through the array of clothes mingled with dust bunnies. He pulled up a collection of old, ugly sweaters only Grandma would admire on her kid, and a blue, puffy vest with a soda stain on the collar. He could throw the things in the washer and hope for the best. This will have to do, he muttered, gathering the clothing and heading back into the house. He's gonna teach those kids how to pick locks and hotwire cars and even lift things from shops, Wendy mused once Dan left as she picked up a toothpick and poked it at her teeth. It's dumb. Why so? Seuss carefully changed the angle of the light bulb and tried again. Cause I wanted to know that stuff, but Stan said he never had the time to deal. Stan doesn't have much time, Seuss reminded evenly, trying to screw the bulb in the opposite direction. Then why the hell is he fostering kids? Wendy paused, before giving a short huff. She lazily kicked her feet onto the counter, folding her arms behind her head and nearly knocking her Ashanka crooked. She let the tension leave her body, taking on a typical relaxed attitude. Whatever, I could care less. That's the spirit, Seuss declared, now aligning the light bulb and slipping his hammer from his tool belt. I just hope they can play cards. Wendy stated, ignoring the shattering of glass and the inevitable screams as Seuss tipped off the ladder. I could use a company, 